aloha. He caught me reading The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Have you heard about it? Making a lot of headway on the national frontier for books. Um, it's about a story, uh, it's about Nora, a young woman who in the afterlife gets to go back into her life by picking an alternate choice as to a decision she made earlier in life. Now, for me, this opened up a ton of possibilities. So I enjoyed the read. For instance, think about this. Let's say you're a dentist, but you always dreamt of being an engineer. And you had that opportunity in, the, in, in your afterlife to go back and be that engineer. How would that feel, right? Or let's say you rescued Tippy the cat from the Humane Society, but you really wanted to breed AKC registered dogs and make a lot of money. Well, now you have that chance. You can go do it and see how that works out for you. Here's a really good one. Let's say you marry the love of your life that got away. How would your marriage be? Would you be happier? Would you be happier having married that person? Possibilities are endless. My name is Elaine Gallant, and I am Think Tech Hawaii's host for Books, 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 where during this live streaming series, we're going to talk about reading books, writing books, and everything in between and beyond. Which brings me to our special guest tonight. He is the epitome of that statement as chair of the Hawaii Music and Book Festival. Let's welcome Doug Chin. Aloha, Doug. How are you? Hey, Elaine. Hi. I'm Great so to happy be on the show. You. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, you know, the Hawaii Book and Music Festival has been going on for how many years now? Oh my gosh, it's been uh, it's been decades. You, you've already caught me in a, a question that I don't actually know the specific, <laughs> but I'll tell you this: it's been around for as long as um, as long as I've lived in Honolulu, and that's it's been like three decades actually. And and so during this time, I have so many memories, um, especially of the live festival when it was going on, uh, of being able to go down to the festival to walk around uh, the different tents and to see um, authors and people uh, discussing very important subjects, uh, either about the books that they wrote or about um, issues that really were important to the community. Um, and then to be able to go grab a bite to eat at a food truck um, and then to be able to browse among the, the used books that were sent. Remember books, hardcover books? Um, they, there are all these bunch, there's all these uh, used books that were uh, just ready for anybody to be able to take for free or for 10 cents or a quarter, um, and it was really a, a lovely time. I thought I read it was actually formed like in 2005, and the first festival was 2006, something like that. Um, so it has yeah. been a long time, and, and it's a two-day uh, It's a two day event, right? It's a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and second norm, under normal, non-pandemic circumstances, and we're going to get to what this, uh, what this year, <laughs> last year was like. Uh, but under typical circumstances, um, it's a live event um, that, that takes place on, on public grounds uh, for a long time. Um, since it first started, it was taking place at the Honolulu Hale um, Civic Center, um, which is in downtown Honolulu. And more recently, um, the board has made the decision to move it to the University of Hawaii uh, so we could be closer to um, students, um, the professors, and to better work out the partnership that we have with um, uh, the University of Hawaii and, and their publishing house. Well, that's fantastic. Um, do let's talk about this year's event because hey, it's going on right now, right now. Yes, yes. I, I'm ex I'm exhausted. There 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 have been so <laughs> many there have been so many amazing um, panelists and local authors as well as um, national authors that because of the fact that we were doing it all on Zoom. Um, we had the opportunity to be able to uh, to partner with other organizations to be able to bring them in and and let them be part of the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. I saw um, Bob Wood on yes. there. Sorry. I saw Bob Wood on there. Woodward. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that, so that's amazing. And and so I I think for the people who were able to take part of it, um, you know, so long as you knew how to be able to link up and and be able to register for the programs. Um, there were some amazing 
um, not just authors that were talking about their books, uh, but some great musicians uh, that yeah. were concerts. Um, there was a Makana concert um, that was done at Kauai Ha'o Church um, that, that happened at the very beginning of the month that, that actually, like, it, honestly, it brought me to tears. It was, it was so, yeah. so beautiful and, uh, and so just, just so delightful in the presentation um, that actually what, what's great for viewers to know is that there's going to be a repeat of the, of the performance tomorrow. And let me tell you when it is. 2 p.m. So, so yeah, so uh, you can actually be able to log into the Hawaii Book and Music Festival um, and to be able to uh, schedule yourself to be able to watch the repeat uh, at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And that's going to be one of the last um, last presentations that the festival makes um, as we zoom to uh, the state and, and to the entire world. That's fantastic. Now, it does go on until I thought I read it goes on to the fourth. So it goes on to go on, on until the third. Sure. There's going to be there's three more um, there's three more uh, presentations that are tomorrow, including Makana. Then there's going to be one more at 10 o'clock a.m. on the fourth. Uh, end out with storyteller Joe Miller talking about tales for a planetary autumn. So that's about as perfect yet going into Thursday. November. Yep, that's on Thursday. November first. So who are the three for tomorrow? Because if somebody has not participated, because uh, now those of us who live on the outer islands don't always get to go to this festival because it costs us a lot of money to go but um now that it's by the internet and by zoom who can we anticipate seeing tomorrow and okay. do you know here's the lineup for tomorrow uh to at 10 o'clock a.m uh we have an italian storyteller uh giovanna conforto and, and i can tell you i'm definitely looking at my notes here so that's what i'm looking down at but uh <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to make sure I get the the, um, the author's name correct. Uh, and what is, what is it about this person? So um, he's he's an Italian storyteller, and and he is going to basically. I think what's nice about our storyteller series is uh, these are people who are um, able to do actually something very similar to to what you presented us with in your in your nice introduction. Um, you know, just it's just kind of a, a great way to be able to sit down at your computer, take a deep breath. And to be able to uh, listen to someone tell a story, uh, which is probably one of the you know one of the long traditions of not only in Hawaii but all around the world and in many cultures, um, and it's just a nice way to be able to uh, relax during the morning and, and hear from uh, who else is tomorrow? storyteller. And who else is tomorrow? We have two more. Well, okay. McKenna. Third right, Makana. Makana's at two o'clock, um, and then tomorrow evening, if you like to cook. And you're into cookbooks and recipes. Yes. Chef Sheldon Simeon, no. uh, who has done his, who has written a book called "Cook Real Hawaii," real Hawaii. All right. Oh, so, uh, he is so he, favorite. He he's like a hero here on Maui. He would just love him. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. So yes. and and you've already touched on something that I think was was kind of a, a nice side benefit of what happened. Um, uh, due to the circumstances that we had where we, we put everything on Zoom. And that is we had so much more participation uh, from people on the yeah. neighborhoods who were able to watch. I got to tell you, I, I really missed the live festival. Uh, that, that's kind of like what yes. got me excited about joining the board. But I understand how difficult it is for people from the neighbor island to fly over, um, to uh, go to what will be UH next year, um, and to set that all up. Um, but uh, but I, I, what, one thing I remember actually about the cooking demonstrations is when they were live, <laughs> they were so awesome because you could actually you could actually go up and sample afterwards. You know, oh my! Smells so good, and I could be able to check it out. Well, tomorrow um, you, you won't be in person, um, but he will be demonstrating, and uh, you can you can watch it from the comfort of your own kitchen and perhaps learn a that, That's wonderful. So let's talk about some of the people. Um, because this is on books, 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 and even though music is a fabulous creative outlet, and and also involves writing and words and symbolisms and all of that. Um, we're going to focus a little bit more on the books. Tell us uh, what new. Tell us, tell us about some of the new authors that you presented. I, I recognize some names. I got real excited uh, seeing uh, Kauai. Uh, what's his middle name? Uh, I, now, see, now I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote um, sharks in the. Oh God! It was a wonderful book. I read it. Quite strong. Wash, Washburn. I think it is. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have the name. I'm sorry about that. 
Fabulous. Um, well, let me tell you, we. Yes. Yeah, we had we had some great um, VIP authors, um, and yeah. partly it was because of the fact that we were able to do this on Zoom. Um, not only did we have um, a, a, a huge amount of uh, there were a lot of local books that were actually published books that were published by local authors um, in the last year. Uh, you know, think of that. I mean, that's that's great. The books are making a comeback. Um, but uh, but in addition to that, we had some VIP speakers. So that included um, Kate Raworth, um, Maisie Hiro Senator Hirono, um, actually wrote a wrote a great book. Um, Lisa C, um, as you already said, Bob uh, Woodward and Costa. They they already uh, they they were able to present their book. Um, Michael E. Mann, um, that was a heavily attended uh, panel. Almost 500 people watched it uh, from all around the state and you know elsewhere. Um, Charles Johnson and Joy Harjo uh, were all involved in the festival um, talking about their book. Correct. She's a poet. Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Um, and uh, and I think what was uh, what was nice about not only this group of VIP authors, but like I said, um, there, there were a bunch of local authors who were also able to talk about their books. And I, I got to say, um, I mean, I think I lean more towards like law and politics, but um, but let me just give you an example of one. Um, so one was um, the the uh, the person, the federal public defender, who sort of broke open the the case involving um, former Honolulu police chief Louis K. Aloha and his wife, um, Catherine K. Aloha. Um, he wrote a book called The Mailbox Conspiracy, and so his book came out in the fall, and uh, and he was able to be uh, interviewed and to have a panel discussion, uh, really about that book. I read it from cover to cover. I, I, uh, I mean, I, I think it's going to be something that you know the, our local law school makes part of their curriculum for for everybody who enters into the law school. It's just such a great um, description, not just of like a, a you know a, your typical kind of you know very exciting kind of corruption case. Um, right. That's just very disturbing because it happened right here. Um, but and then it so recently, I mean, we all, I mean, this is this is still fresh news to all of us, right? right. Right, we'll try absolutely. processing it. Right, but um, but Alexander Silver was living it firsthand um, because he was representing um, the brother-in-law who was falsely accused of stealing a mailbox uh, from you know from the grandmother that kind of started this whole ball rolling as more threads got pulled uh, in, in terms of hey what's really going on here um, and it eventually resulted in. You know, um, oh, that were very serious. Title again. Say the title again. Um, it's the called box. the mailbox. It's called the, the mailbox, mailbox conspiracy. Conspiracy. I ran a. I, I mentor a large book club, so that might be one of our picks. Oh sure. So. <laughs> um, also, a really a really good friend of mine, the the attorney general who preceded me. His name is David Louis. Um, he also wrote a book, um, kind of talking about his time when he was the attorney general. Um, and I think for all of us who are not authors. Uh, we really appreciate people who actually, you know, like it takes such discipline and um, and, so, and courage, I think, you know, to just kind of put yourself out there and, and write something. And so uh, my hat's off to uh, David Louie for writing a book and, and being able to talk about it. He, you know who his panelist interviewer was? It was former Governor Abercrombie. So how cool was that? <laughs> that is fabulous. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is amazing. Um, oh, gosh, I got a couple of really good questions for you, too. Um, I don't know if we want to go ahead and talk about more about the location for next year's or how you want, you want to go into that now? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'd, I'd like to talk about that because you want to go live next year. You want to take it back to a two day weekend event. So how's that going to shape up? Right. Um, so I, I think, uh, the, the typical, um, the typical festival has always been live. It's been on the weekend. I think something that'll be different is instead of it being at the Honolulu Halle Civic Grounds, um, it'll downtown. It'll actually be at UH, and um, and part of that came from a partnership that was developed between the festival and the university, uh, which has a very robust um, authors program and publishing house. Um, yes, and and just being able to get us closer to in closer proximity to students who could then be part of the conversation and part of the discussions right there, right outside their dorms or right up where their classes are being held. So, um, so we're trying to do that. But I, I think what's also important for people to know, especially people watching this show who are probably seeing it on the internet, 
um, is that is that we're taking the lessons that we learned from last year and this year, and the intention is to is to try to do as many programs as possible as we can, um, um, and and have them also be streamed onto the internet so that people who can't travel uh, or who live on neighbor islands or elsewhere have the opportunity to be able to participate. Well, oh, that's what. That's wonderful. Actually, doesn't it make you a little jealous? But don't you want to be a student again and walk oh, outside yeah. the farm and be a part of this festival? Oh yeah, It'd be amazing. Right, amazing. right, right. So and, I, and I think, right. and I think oh, all of us like. I think what um, again, those of us who are readers, I think what we uh, always appreciate and and perhaps don't get enough is is it like there's so many times when we enjoy a good book and you're like, boy, that was really amazing. And then I know like how special it is, just like just from this last month, just to be able to, to hear from the person who wrote the book and to hear about you know what what their what their heart was behind it or what they were thinking about. Um, it, it really uh, just makes the book come alive. And uh, and so I, I think that's actually something that's really special about the festival is is this opportunity to be able to connect um, the person who wrote the book uh, with the people who are reading it. And for them to, to ask questions and, and for them to get some explanations and things like that. I think it's it's really um, very special. Yeah, books really open up a lot of possibilities, you know. It's amazing. But um, what about uh, you happen to mention the press, the, the uh, publication house that's with the university? Talk a little bit about that. And also, are there going have there been or is there now and will there be some Hawaiian uh, printed type you know like i know they do the newspaper i mean are they going are there any books that are going to be promoted like uh, the woman who wrote the uh did the dictionary on the 600 words or phrases that hawaiians use for rain yeah oh my god yeah that's fantastic and and yeah. so a question i mean i think because we're based here in hawaii uh we have a strong component um not only in our plans for next year uh, but already uh, this year and last year, uh, there, if you look through the, if you scroll through the schedule for the 2021 um, Book and Music Festival, you can see uh, just a, a lot of great um, presentations by local Native Hawaiian Indigenous authors um, talking about um, what they what they wrote, um, what they believe in, what's important to them, and and just sharing their manao. And I think that's very very special. Um, I, I got to say that uh, the partners and sponsors that we have in the festival are, are not just limited to um, UH Press and to the and the University of Hawaii uh, at Manoa. Um, I also want to give a shout out. I should just take this opportunity now to like list through. Uh, list right sponsors. Not a super long list, uh, but I, I want to make sure I, I talk about them also because we really yes, super appreciated the support. I mean, it's hard to raise money during um, during the pandemic when everybody's at home and, and these people. Yes stepped up and made the festival possible so that it could keep going um hey. even for all the challenges that we had so uh they are kamehameha publishing um best press uh the lilio kalani trust um we had some other great uh, sponsors like oceanit um hawaii hei so uh, the electric company a hawaiian electric um hawaii public radio um civil beat iheart media bdk oh. Um, Hawaii Green Growth and Holly Kalani. Um, and um, I'm going to, at the risk of uh, annoying all the other sponsors, I, I am going to give a special shout out um, to Civil Beat. Um, they they um, are an online, um, basically an online newspaper platform that, you know, all, all of us who were ever in government were really familiar with Civil Beat. Um, but, uh, but they have their own connection to, and their own mission statement in terms of wanting to connect to the community and get a conversation happening with, with their readers uh, about what's important to them. So by partnering with Civil Beat, especially during this time, we were able to really uh, like triple our audience uh, over last year um, and, and, really get, um, and, and really get a lot more involvement uh, from people who were able to hear about these presentations and then participate in the, the different discussions. Right, let me ask you this. Um, the, the festival is only two more two more days and one session. So, well, one day and one session. Um, if we missed anything, how can we go back and view it? Yes, okay, you can see it on the, our, our YouTube channel. Um, so there's two ways, and I'm gonna look down just to make sure that I 
I get right that exactly. Um, so basically, um, it's streamed and it's archived on our HVMF, our Hawaii Book of Music Festival Facebook site. Um, and then the other way that you can see it is UH Manoa has a Better Tomorrow Speaker Series YouTube channel. What a mouthful. And yet that's what they call it. <laughs> it's called, called the, the UH Manoa. I actually think UH Manoa BTS <laughs> Speaker Series. <laughs> UH Manoa Better Tomorrow Speaker Series. Um, they have a YouTube channel video, a website. And from there, um, you're actually, if you go there and look up the Hawaii Book of Music Festival, you can actually watch all of the previous presentations. So if you missed one, um, and then you're able to, you know, if you miss any of the presentations that we talked about that are happening tomorrow, um, you can still go back to the UH Better Tomorrow Speaker Series YouTube channel and you can watch it there. What, what a privilege. What a privilege to be able to access this because where would we be without books? Where would we be, we be without music in our lives, right? Now you're an attorney, so tell me, how is it that you became the chair of this wonderful <laughs> festival? <laughs> And you've been at it a, a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think when the opportunity came up, I'll, I'll tell you that what, what I always thought about was I, I remembered how special it was for my family. Like like um, when my when my kids were growing up, like, do you remember? Okay, so remember Barnes and Nobles and Borders when they were around? <laughs> yes. Like um, a, a typical, so like it was almost like a traditional Sunday afternoon um, in our family is is be, because it was hot and we didn't have air conditioning at our house um a typical sunday afternoon was we would go to um the the borders or excuse me the bards and noble either at uh, kahala mall or at alamona mall and we'd find a couch and we just camp there and we would read <laughs> and so uh, it was really fun um but, but that was kind of our our time and and you know as a, as a family and then and then later on what i loved about the book of music festival was that it, it almost became like a like an intellectual fair like you know so in other words the carnival is awesome it's great to be able to go on rides um those are all you know those are always um you know a pleasure uh but but being able to just like i said like go to a place where you have this tent and somebody is talking about health and wellness and then yeah. you go to the next tent and somebody's talking about climate change and sustainability and then the next tent somebody's talking cooking and and then there's a keiki hula per performance happening uh down the ways um, I just really, I, I love that. And, and so when the opportunity came, uh, to be part of the board and, and I was, you know, back out, out of the public sector and, and just back trying to think about ways to be able to give to the community, this is like the first thing that came to my mind. And so, um, and so it's been a real pleasure. I, I love the people that I get to serve with on the board. And, um, and I think we've got some exciting plans for what we're going to be doing. Want to name them on the board? Maybe uh, are there authors on the board or? Yes. So there's people who are um, who are um, part of the the different publishing local publishing houses, um, as well as um, so some people who do write or or do visual media or or are musicians. And I think all of them are able to contribute a lot. Um, we even have the Hawaii State Librarian um, on the board. Um, oh, so I think she's able to I presentation, didn't they? Sorry. Yes, they did. Yeah, and that's really great. Yes, I mean the state of libraries. Where would we be without libraries in our lives? I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you my mom was. Do you know what? You know what? My mom was a librarian. So really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's another fun story. Is that is that actually, when I was growing up, my mom would bring me to work with her. Um, or, you know, and that, that like that was my summer daycare. Was that she would just like, <laughs> in the um in the library system and I would just wander around it. Oh <laughs> Look, I, that's, that's back in the day when, you know, things weren't so, people weren't so helicoptery and hovering over well, then you need The midnight library. It, it's, it, um, it's not for my age group, but it, it's, it's an interesting uh, book. Uh, the librarian is her mentor in it. So I'll just oh, give you that. Oh, cool. Cute. But anyway, the book fair, let's talk a little bit about the musicians now because they are equally important. And um, like I said, they are words, they're using words, they're singing, they're performing. T tell us about some of the entertainers. Yeah, well, like I said, we, are, we already had, uh, uh, we had Makana uh, put on a special presentation from Kauai Ha'o Church. And that, in, in many ways, that was, um, it was a venue that we wouldn't have had if we were going live. 
Um, and, and I think it was, uh, I think if you watch it tomorrow at two o'clock, you'll see exactly what I mean. It was, it was very um, and powerful to have him uh, be performing his songs um, in such a special place. That was, it was just, it was very powerful. Um, but I, I think what's also, what's also great is that, um, you know, I mean, don't, don't, I mean, we've all been cooped up in our houses and it's so nice to be able to hear live music. I mean, that's just, a, I, I, I would say that's probably something that, um, that I think we've all ended up missing is, is just the ability to, to hear uh, musicians, you know, just playing outside and to be able to appreciate that and to appreciate their art um, and, uh, and just the special um, passion and heart that they bring to everything that they do. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, what else can I, what, what, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, do you have any closing statements? What would you like to say? <laughs> well, you have a, closing, I have many things I want to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, you know, you know, what I would say is this, is that, um, you know, I think, I think we're, we're excited about what the next year is going to be like. Um, you know, I, I think, I think especially coming out of the time that, that we've all been in, um, I, I think there's, if anything, there's, there's come a, a greater appreciation, at least on my part, uh, of just, you know, needing, needing time to uh, you know, not just be stressing about the immediate things in front of me, um, but to really be able to appreciate um, creativity and, and people who um, have a special voice and uh, and being able to learn from those voices and so express it's, it's expressed through books or music I, I think it's it's really a, a great way to be able to be part of the festival so i just want to encourage people um if in case you missed it <laughs> to, to you know go on to our um go on to our youtube uh channel at the uh manoa better tomorrow speaker series channel um, and to be able to check out some of those things, just turn it on, have it in the background. Uh, that's what I often did. And it just, it gets you thinking. Uh, it gets you thinking, it gets you appreciating. Um, and, and a lot of times being able to appreciate hearing the voices of people who just live down the street from you or live, uh, you know, on the next island. And I think that's very special and wonderful. That is special and wonderful. And we forgot to mention, how much does it cost to attend? Oh my gosh. So that... <laughs> I, the, the 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 most special and wonderful thing about all this is that it's been free, um, and, and we do rely upon fundraising and, uh, and upon sponsors to be able to you know care about this festival to be able to to put up money and and, and even individual sponsors. So so we really appreciate that. But I think that's that's probably been the greatest thing is that for as long as the festival's been around, um, the the admission is free, um, and I think that's. Um, that, that's something worth noting. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me it's, to say. That. Well, well, it, it's like free. It, amazing. I, I, I would, you know, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. The food's not free. The food's not free, but the food's really good. Right. And you say there's rides too. There's are there not? Rides? Oh, yeah. When I was talking, when I was talking about rides, I, I just meant that the, the difference between the festival, I, which is a little more books oriented, versus like right. your typical right. carnival, which has a lot of rides. Um, but I, I think that like normally there are a few cakey rides for like very small children just to help the whole family get excited about it. Well, I do hope that we have um, let people know more about the Hawaii book and, and music festival and your numbers are going to increase tomorrow. <laughs> you know, <I> so <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah. Yes. And speaking of the fact that you rely on donations, uh, think. Uh, think Tech Hawaii does too. So I really yes. want to thank all the people who donate money to Think Tech Hawaii to keep it going. I also want to thank um, Jay Fidel, the executive producer. Without him, I don't know what would happen. And the broadcast engineer and also the staff and all the technicians. And if I can put out a little shout out, I'm going to give one to Haley. <laughs> and Eric. Thank you, Eric. He's behind the scenes. Folks behind um, the scenes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doug. It was a pleasure meeting you, talking with you, sharing this passion about with books. Um, they they show us the world and they take us out of our world and give us a chance to to see and believe and and partake, as does music. So thank you very much, Doug. The pleasure was mine. I hope the pleasure was also our viewers. Aloha. Thank you, Thank you so Aloha. much. It's really awesome. Aloha.